All right, welcome to day two of section 5.1. Uh, we'll start off with simulation. Well, simulation is the imitation of chance behavior uh, based on a model that accurately reflects the situation. What are some of the important points about performing a simulation? Number one, we must look at stating the situation. We're going to ask a question of interest about some chance process. We're going to plan. In other words, describe how we're going to use a chance device like a die, a coin, a calculator, table D, uh, to imitate one repetition of the process. And then tell what you record at the end of each repetition. You'll actually do it. In other words, perform the many repetitions in the simulation. And then make your conclusion. Include. So use the results of your simulation to answer the question of interest. Uh, so I might be asking a question of interest about some chance process. I might say that a uh, uh, family plans to have five children. You know, how can I use a chance device to imitate one repetition of that process? Well, I could say I'm going to use a coin. Okay? And then I'll record heads as boys, tails as girls. And then what I can do is I can then do the, do the simulation and actually flip the coin five times and record the results. So maybe I get three heads and two tails, which means I've got three boys and two girls. That's just a very basic simulation by using some kind of physical device. Uh, I could use the RAND int on the calculator or table D. Um, you know, could uh, uh, use some other technology as well to perform the simulations. Again, it's these four steps, state, plan, do, and conclude. So here's an example. In an attempt to increase sales, a breakfast cereal company decides to offer a NASCAR promotion. Each box of cereal contains a collectible card featuring one of the NASCAR drivers. So there'll be one for Jeff Gordon, uh, one for Dale Earnhardt Jr., one for Tony Stewart, one for Don Danica Patrick, and one for Jimmy Johnson. All right. so there's five different cards. Uh, and the company says that each of the five cards is equally likely to appear in the, any box of cereal. So a NASCAR fan decides to keep buying boxes of cereal until she has all five driver's cards. She is surprised when it takes her 23 boxes to get the full set of cards. Should she be surprised? So in other words, here's the problem. Is what is the probability that it will take 23 or more boxes to get a full set of the five NASCAR cards? Okay. So a lot of people will think that, oh, you just got to buy five boxes and we'll get the five cards. Well, that's uh, uh, probably not, ne not necessarily likely uh, to, to buy five boxes because uh, you might get some repeats. So we want to look at, well, what is that probability? How what is the probability it'll take 23 or more boxes to get a set of five cards? Now, she was surprised by that. So, here we go. Here's our, uh, the, uh, our plan. Back again on the previous page, this is kind of stating the problem uh, back here. So, uh, kind of the state uh, part of the four steps in the procedure. All right. um, so, here's our plan. We're going to need five numbers to represent the five possible cards. So we'll assign a 1 to Jeff Gordon, a 2 to Dale Earnhardt, a 3 to Tony Stewart, a 4 to Don Danica Patrick, and a 5 to Jimmy Johnson. And we can just use the RAND int command in our calculator, RAND int 1, 5, uh, to simulate buying one box of cereal and looking at which card is inside. You know, and then we keep pressing that until we got one, uh, at least one of each of these numbers. Okay. Um, so... Now, uh, we'll record the number of boxes that we had to open. So we go actually go and do it. And if I did one little sample on my calculator, uh, this is what happened. I've got, uh, I got the 3, I got the 5, I got a 2, I got a 1. Well, in the next box, I got a 5, so I've already got that. Same thing with the 2, the 3, I got another 5, and then 4. It took me 9 boxes in my first try uh, to get all five cards. Did it again, 
And it took me 16 boxes to finally get those those five cards. Because here's the five, the one, the two. Those are repeats. There's the four repeats all through here. And it took me until that 16th box to get the last card. Did it again. And it took 10 boxes. Did it again. It took 15 boxes. Did it again. It took 22 boxes. Well, I did it a lot. Did it many, many times and kind of created a little dot plot of my different results. Uh, you can see here at nine boxes, uh, that's one of those dots right there. All right? 16 boxes is one of these right here. So I did this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. You know, recording there's the 10 boxes, got that one, got the 15, uh, got the 22 boxes. You know, so I did this many, many more times and this just looked at the... Uh, the dot plot of our results. <coughs> and what you can see is uh, 23 uh, was out here. It never happened. It never happened to get 23 boxes. So our conclusion after doing, this is the do part of our four-step problem, four-step procedure, uh, we make a conclusion. It says we never had to buy more than 22 boxes to get the full set of NASCAR driver's cards in 50 repetitions and all these 50 there were 50 different uh, experiments I did or repetitions of our simulation so uh, the probability that it takes 23 or more boxes well there's an you happen there's an any that happened 23 or more so that's zero out of the out of the 50 uh, which gives me a probability of roughly zero all right so yes the NASCAR fans should be surprised about how many boxes she had to buy because the probability of getting 23 or more, according to our simulation, uh, was zero. It should never happen. So, there we go. There's our first experience with simulation. So, should uh, be able to uh, talk about interpreting probably as a long run. Again, that's the key thing. Probably as a long run relative frequency. And then we should be able to use simulation to model our chance behavior. So that's the done with section 4.1, and uh, if we go and look at that assignment sheet, uh, we should uh, have that completed, and now you should be able to work on this assignment uh, for the next day. So uh, keep working hard, and we'll see you in section 5.2. Have a good one.